Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, back with another piece of gear that I'd like to share with you all today. A piece of gear that I've gotten some decent use out of on several trips, and uh, actually it's been in a decent amount of videos as well, but I still get a nice amount of comments and questions about it, so I figured, eh, probably time to do a dedicated kind of review video to talk about it. And uh, what this piece of gear is, is a saw in this little pouch here. I really do find this uh, particular saw to be a great blend, at least in my experience, of low cost, low weight, and low volume, which often you might not think of, but think about it. There are some backpacking saws out there that are eh, a little bigger than this. And uh, this one packs down pretty small, and we'll take a look at it right now. First things first, you can see it's in this pouch here, which may be driving some of you nuts because, well, what does it look like? So let's take it out of the pouch, okay? And now things might begin to be a little more clear. This is a pocket chainsaw. Fairly straightforward and simple. It's a length of chainsaw right there. In this case, this one is 24 inches. A length of chainsaw, two little metal pieces at the end, and two cloth handles. That's really all there is to it. Now, the reason I got this was, and for those of you who've seen some of my other videos, especially my solo trips, uh, you may have noticed that I'm not super crazy about fires. And when I do have one, I just kind of go to normal backpacker route. I scrounge up some sticks on the ground, stuff that's big enough to, you know, break with my hands or with a quick uh, stomp with your foot or at the biggest, maybe find two trees, you know, wedge it in there and break it. But about, I guess it was maybe a year and a half ago or two seasons ago, I uh, did a winter trip in Dolly Sods. actually did a video about it, winter camping in Dolly Sods. And I uh, went with a large group of guys, knew we weren't gonna be doing a ton of miles. There's gonna be plenty of time at camp. So I went online and said, let me just see, finally get myself a saw. Um, in the past, um, my main experience was with a Coleman like folding saw, that classic guy I'm sure you've seen. That actually belonged to Mike and uh, we used that on some of his trips, but again, I didn't really carry a saw. I should also point out that I was being kind of cheap. And the nice thing about this saw is it's 10 bucks on top of the fact that it's also pretty lightweight. So I said, you know what, 10 bucks, I'll try it out. I'll show up with this. Some of the other guys are bringing other tools like a hatchet and uh, larger knives and stuff like that. So I said, hey guys, I'll bring this all. So I picked this up. Now, another point is if you go online, just about any major place you can find these. And I'm not even really making a point in this video to talk about the specific brand because for instance, I got this on Amazon. If you go on there right now, uh, you're gonna see a whole bunch of these various different brands and really they're all the same idea. A piece of chainsaw with some sort of cloth strap. Some of them do have more of a hard plastic strap or um, handle on the end that I'm sure is more comfortable, but for my application, I wanted to keep the weight down um, as much as I could. So I went with the cloth strap model here. Now this is four ounces, half an ounce maybe for the pouch and three and three quarters for the saw itself. Not too bad. And then you can also get it in longer lengths that uh, go all the way up to, I believe, 48 uh, inches. And there's 36 and some other ones out there, depending on the brand you get. And some of the brands make all three sizes. For the most part, though, they really do all seem similar. So we're just going to talk about this design in general today. Now, that four ounces is going to be hard to beat for a saw. Uh, there are some folding saws out there, actually, that are four ounces. But other than that, as far as a full-fledged like hand saw, like the Sven saw, I believe a 21 inch is a little over one pound. And a 15 inch guy is a little under a pound. So a definite plus in the weight category. And speaking of the Sven saw, or basically if you aren't familiar with one, it's like a triangle saw. It's uh, three pieces that goes into a triangle shape. And now you have kind of a hand saw and you saw from the top, just like you would with like a carpenter saw or something. With this design, you're going to go right underneath of the log, slip it under, then grab the two handles and sawing motion back and forth. So basically you find yourself a nice dead fallen tree that's just a little bit lifted off the ground because of the angle. You only need a couple inches to slip underneath there, get this blade under it, then you stand over top of it. You got your full body weight pulling against it that puts a lot of force on the blade and then you just work it back and forth as opposed to the hand saw where you're going from the top and eventually, while using one of those saws, if you're in a kind of optimal, comfortable position where you're angled over it from the top, the blade will eventually start hitting the ground and impeding your sawing. Whereas with this, 
long as you can slip it underneath, you're gonna be rocking and rolling. With the 24 inch version, I find by myself, one user, you can get through some pretty nice size logs, uh, very big at least by a backpacking standard. Um, we're not talking about like fireplace stuff, but we've done a lot of stuff, really decent size. And also, you can get the larger lengths. And I've seen with the 48 inch guys, you can actually get one guy on each side of a bigger log and you're each holding the side and you're going back and forth. Lumberjack teamwork style, if you will. Some quick tips I will point out. These handles here, okay, with bare skin, I have done some damage to my skin. So I do usually bring a pair of gloves, like a pair of mechanics gloves or similar work glove like that. What happens is most of the times where I've kind of ripped my first layer of skin off, you're going really good with this thing and then you will hit a snag and the blade gets stuck, your hand keeps going and you get a really bad friction burn. Um, that can tear you up here. So pair of gloves, you'll be good on that. Does add a little bit of weight to the setup, but I find that if you're going on a trip where you're bringing a saw anyway, a nice pair of light or medium work gloves are a pretty good asset for the weight anyway. Second tip I would say, bring yourself a little bottle of some sort of oil. In my case, I prefer to bring a uh, gun oil like this here, REM oil, which in fact is in a tiny little bottle already. So you might be wondering why I don't carry it in that and instead put it in this guy. I did used to carry it in this, but just a little tip for you out there. Um, these flip top lids, at least on the REM oil, uh, it was leaking in my pack just a little bit to be a little annoying. So instead I got these multi-purpose bottles. I got a bunch of them. I made sure to clearly label it saw and I squeeze a little bit in there, like a half ounce. Keep it right in the same pouch, part of my kit. And a couple drops of that every once in a while when the blade seems to be slowing down will really clean it up, get some of the sap off of there and just keep things running smoothly. And it's only costing you an extra half ounce. And then another tip and something to be aware of, this saw is a workout, okay? So you're going to heat up. Now during the summer, that just means you're gonna sweat some more and you're probably already sweating anyway. During the winter, when I'm actually more likely to bring this because I want a nice big roaring fire, you wanna be careful to open up those clothes, vent a bit, maybe take a layer off, just pay attention to that because you're gonna possibly work up quite a sweat if you got your winter gear on and you start hoofing along with this thing. You will burn some calories, which brings me to another thing. If you were truly in a survival situation, like, well, I guess you'd be glad to have any saw, but you'd be burning a lot of calories with this versus potentially some other saw models. So keep that in mind. But for us, we like to go out there and just have fun. And, uh, you know, we got plenty of food. It's kind of fun to get a little workout in and justify the big old steak that we're going to throw over the grill afterwards. Now, again, I did mention that this review isn't really brand specific, but if I do remember correctly, this is the chain mate and the blades on it are decent. I mean, it's the only one I've ever used, but I will say when you're searching around online, there are some different ones that allegedly, at least from the pictures and the reviews, have nicer blades on them. Now this guy was 10 bucks. I've seen ones all the way up to $20 for the same length, but they look like they have more aggressive teeth. So that's maybe something worth looking into. And of course, speaking of blades, it's a regular chainsaw blade. So if you have uh, the gear or a friend with the gear to sharpen a chainsaw blade, you can keep this thing alive that much longer. In my case, I haven't sharpened mine yet, taking it on a decent handful of trips, but uh, my friend Mike does have a chainsaw sharpening device. I'm sure that I'll give it a little performance boost for future trips, but who knows, maybe some of those other brands out there with different blades have higher quality, longer life blades, I'm not sure. Um, but just keep that in mind when you're out there shopping around for one. Speaking of which, perfect excuse for a shameless promotion. If you are gonna go on Amazon and pick one of these up, regardless of the brand, and you want to support the channel. In fact, if you're going on Amazon to shop for anything and you want to support the channel, check this out. Just go to my website first, Syntax77.com. You're going to see a link that says Amazon. Click on that. It'll pull Amazon up just as it always does. And any shopping you do during that session, Amazon will contribute a portion of the revenue at no additional cost to you to support this here very channel. Eh, to keep me a couple cents closer to doing another trip video and a little further away from sitting at a desk, which is always nice. But anyway, back to the blade. One other tip I can give you before I go, and I figured this out when just trying to do some comparisons. I went ahead and weighed this here saw right out of my shed. This is a Stanley saw. This is 10 bucks or less itself, and it's 12 ounces. Now, compared to four ounces, that's triple the weight, but it did kind of put in my head, if you're in a pinch and you want to go out backpacking and you need a saw, grab one of these out of the shed or go to Lowe's and pick one up for 10 bucks. I'm sure you can use it for something else. Keep the little cardboard protector, of course, and I don't see why I couldn't easily slip this right in my backpack. And for 12 ounces, I got a real saw. 
and uh, this thing does some work. Just a little something while I discovered doing the research for this video. But anyway, that is the pocket chainsaw. Hope this was useful to some of you out there who are looking for more info on it, or maybe you just hadn't even thought about this thing existing. That's what it is. If you have any tips for me on other saw options out there that are better or have different characteristics, please hit me up in the comments section below. I would love to learn about new options. Till next time, I'm Syntax77. Have fun out there. <laughs>